As we continue our worship here at Calvary Baptist Church in Larkspur, uh, we are uh, studying uh, about the Holy Spirit, and uh, we are looking, been looking at the last week or so, the ministries of the Holy Spirit. And so I invite you to take your Bible and turn to John's Gospel, chapter 16. John, chapter 16. Let's ask the Lord to uh, bless his word and his Holy Spirit to guide us and teach us this evening. Heavenly Father, we are very thankful for thy Holy Spirit. We thank you for his ministry to us. We thank you, Lord, that you have told us of the things about him and then what he does for us such vital things that we need desperately. And so I pray, Lord, we'll not only learn uh, the ministries of the Holy Spirit, but also uh, to avail ourselves of his gracious and wonderful ministry to us. Teach us this evening, Lord. May thy spirit uh, illuminate our hearts. Help me, Lord, to teach the truth nothing but the truth. And I ask these things in Jesus' wonderful and precious name. Amen. Amen. The first thing I want to share with you tonight in the teaching or the ministry of the uh, Holy Spirit is his teaching ministry. And you'll notice here in uh, John chapter 16, uh, beginning with verse 12, Jesus is speaking now. Uh, Jesus, uh, of course, is leaving the disciples. Uh, we're not sure exactly where in that evening this takes place. He could be with them uh, walking uh, towards uh, uh, the garden. Uh, he could still be with them in the upper room. Uh, the Bible doesn't uh, clarify that, but that's not important. What is important is the message is he giving to them. Remember, in chapter 14, he said, let not your heart be troubled. Uh, he knew what they were going through. He, he knew what not only they were going through then, but he knew what they were going to go through in the future, especially uh, the, the night and then that next day. Uh, all of these things he was very aware of. And then, of course, the three days when he would be in the grave. and uh, So they, they needed a great deal. And you might say, well, why didn't he teach all these things before? Because, as all of us know, uh, we can learn something, but we don't always hold on to it. Uh, but if we learn it just before we need it, that's really helpful. Uh, sad to say, sometimes we learn things after we need them. And we wish, oh, I wish I had learned that yesterday. Uh, but uh, so Jesus is preparing them. He also knows what it was going to be like for them after uh, this, of course, time, uh, after he was gone, after he uh, would walk with them upon the earth for 40 days uh, and then go to heaven. Uh, he knew what lay before them. And so this is very important that uh, they understand that one of the things that this Holy Spirit that he was going to send them, that he had promised, was going to do for them. And so beginning with verse 12, he says, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of my, what is mine and declare it to you. And things that the Father has are mine, therefore I said to him uh, that ye will take mine and declare it to you. This is one of the last promises that uh, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ gives to his disciples. And this particular ministry of the Holy Spirit at this point is actually, as Jesus has shared it with them, is really future. 
Uh, it wasn't going to happen just yet, but it was going to happen. He says, when I'm gone, then they would, they would have this uh, ministry. And it began on the day of Pentecost. Uh, and it has continued on through the ages. Nothing has changed. The Holy Spirit is here to teach us. Uh, and uh, Peter, as he got up to preach, and I, I can imagine him uh, standing there with the others and having no idea he was going to do this, uh, having no idea that he was going to be uh, standing before this vast crowd and, uh, and, and having the disciples and others behind him and then to begin to minister to them, to, to actually preach a message to them. Uh, but we see that he recognized, as he's preaching, uh, that he recognized that this was being fulfilled. Uh, in fact, it would be uh, good for us to turn uh, to the book of Acts in chapter 2. Acts in chapter 2. And in Acts in chapter 2, if we begin with verse 16, and keep in mind now the, the ministry that the Holy Spirit will begin to uh, exercise at this moment. Uh, in verse 14, it says, But Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words. For these are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. Now, now every time he quotes, think about the fact that the Holy Spirit is guiding him, teaching him that these portions of Scripture from the Old Testament apply. All right? Uh, you know, uh, a lot of people will read the Old Testament and, and they have no idea that there is so much in the Old Testament that then comes to place in the New Testament. And so he's quoting now, and he says, And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my maid servants and on my maids, uh, men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, uh, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and noble day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, the man attested by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs which God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves also know. Him being delivered by the determined counsel and foreknowledge of God, you have taken by lawless hands, have crucified and put to death, whom God raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be held by it. For David said concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is at my right hand, that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart rejoiced, and my tongue was glad. Moreover, my flesh will also rest in hope, because you will not leave my soul in Hades, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You have known, made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of the joy in your presence. Men and brethren, let me speak freely to you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God has shown uh, with an oath to him that of the first fruits of his body, according to the flesh, he would raise up the Christ to sit on his throne. He, foreseeing this, spoke 
concerning the resurrection of, of the Christ, that his soul was not left in Hades, nor did his flesh flee corruption. This Jesus God has raised up, of which we are all witnesses. Therefore, being exalted to the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he poured out this which is you now see and hear. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he says of himself, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. And so here he is. He stands up before them, of course, in the power of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit uh, guides him and teaches him uh, really on the spot. Uh, that uh, and the, he quotes the first portions of scripture. Uh, of course, he's known the scriptures since he was young. Uh, about probably the age of seven, he would have gone with his father uh, to the uh, synagogue and been taught. Uh, that's what they did. That was one of the things they would do with the son. Uh, the dad would also take him to work so he could learn from his father. Uh, <clears throat> but they also taught him the scriptures. In general, the content of the Spirit's ministry encompasses all the truth, all of God's truth. So wherever we open the Word of God, we can know that the Holy Spirit will teach us. Now, this, of course, means the revelation concerning Christ himself as written in the Word of God. And as we see here, as Peter is preaching, that's exactly what he's doing. You, you think of the last portion there <clears throat> when he's talking about David, and David writes these things. And, uh, you, you know, re just reading the Old Testament, you, you would think, well, what in the world is David talking about? Uh, especially later on when you know that David died, uh, and David was buried, and like Peter says in his his tomb is still with us. So what in the world was he talking about? But the Holy Spirit makes it very clear to Peter and then makes it clear to all of those who were there that David was not speaking of himself, but he was speaking of the coming Messiah, that this was a, a, a message of the, about the Messiah himself. And so we have that uh, ministry that we see that very clearly. And so the, the Spirit teaches the believer the content of Scripture, which then leads us to an understanding. And specifically, he says, an understanding of the things to come. Uh, so there he's talking about prophecy. He's not only talking about the prophecy that would be was already fulfilled in Christ, but also the other prophecies that would be filled in the future. Uh, and, uh, and, and that's one of those more difficult things, I think, because uh, we don't always recognize them. Uh, if, uh, if we were uh, back in the time before Christ and we were reading the uh, Old Testament, the Old Covenant, uh, the scriptures themselves, uh, we wouldn't recognize the time, oh, this is talking about the future. This is talking about the Messiah. This is talking about what is going to happen. We wouldn't have thought that. Uh, but but with the Holy, now that we're saved, now the Holy Spirit dwells within us. Now we can know and rely upon the Holy Spirit as we open God's precious word that he will speak to us and he will tell us what these things mean and help us to better understand the scriptures. Uh, and, and I think that this, this, uh, general promise concerning uh, teaching should encourage us, encourage us uh, to read the Word of God, encourage us, by the way, to, to study prophecy. Uh, don't be afraid of it. Don't think that you have to have a PhD in prophecy or something to be able to uh, read the Word of God and understand it. Uh, <clears throat> notice, too, that the Holy Spirit does not originate the message with himself, 
or of himself, it comes from the Lord. This is God's message through his spirit. The Holy Spirit has a ministry it's but that that ministry is to teach us about God the Father and God the Son. And the result of the teaching ministry of the Spirit is that Jesus Christ is glorified. And if in the teaching and preaching, if Christ is not glorified, then the Spirit is not ministry. If Christ is not glorified, then the Spirit is not ministering. Note that it's not the Spirit who is glorified or who is supposed to be glorified in, the, in, a, in a service. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. And so many have gone off <clears throat> uh, wanting to have more knowledge of the Spirit, which is good and right, but then going off and beginning to emphasize the Spirit, glorify the Spirit, talk nothing about, by, about the Spirit, and the truth of the matter is that's not what's supposed to be taking place. And so that would not be from the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> because Jesus said very clearly that that's not his ministry. He's not here to glorify himself. He's here to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. If Christ is known only through the written word, as we know he is, uh, then he will be glorified when the word of God is expounded in the power of the Spirit. So, how does the Spirit teach the believer? Well, let's turn to 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. Now, when you get to 1 John chapter 2, uh, turn over uh, to verse 27. John writes, But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, and you need, do not need that anyone teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things, and is true, and is not a lie, and just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. Now, first of all, I think you need to understand that this is not saying that uh, human teachers uh, are not necessary, uh, that we don't need them. Uh, and people have gone down this road. Uh, people will take a verse like this and say, oh, well, I, I don't need preachers, I don't need teachers, I don't need any of that. Uh, I can just uh, sit there with the Word of God and get everything I need, and, and that's that. Well, if that is so, then why, number one, does God call pastors and teachers and evangelists? Why did he call apostles and, and uh, prophets? Why does Paul say, for instance, in Romans and uh, chapter, uh, chapter 12, let me just read you here uh, what Paul says in Romans chapter 12, if I can get there, and verse 7, Romans 12, 7, Paul says, or ministry, let us use it in our ministry, he who teaches in teaching. That is one of the spiritual gifts. So why would the Holy Spirit give a spiritual gift to something that wasn't needed? If you don't need teachers, then there would be no need for somebody with the gift of teaching. And in Ephesians, in chapter 4, when it talks about uh, the apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastor teachers that again would, what do you need them? You don't need them at all. 
This is not saying that. This is not what uh, the Bible is teaching us here. Though, as I said, some people will do that and teach that, uh, thinking that they're being very, very spiritual and uh, I don't need any teachers. Now, what we need to do is look at this verse in its context. John has uh, been talking and concerned with uh, the parents of uh, false teachers amongst the believers. Uh, and this is a problem that continually raises its head in the church uh, all the time. And so here we are in church, let's say, and, and we have somebody come and we uh, turn the pulpit over to them or we allow them to teach a class or something. And... Uh, they begin to teach heresy. Uh, they begin to teach something that isn't biblical. And uh, what John is saying to the believers here is, you don't need somebody outside to teach you in that sense. You can tell, you can see that this person is not biblical, that this person is teaching some kind of heresy, some kind of false teaching. Uh, and, uh, and so John has already discussed his own concern uh, about heresies. He's simply declaring that no man really had to tell them the truth because the Holy Spirit would confirm it to them. If we know God's word, if we have studied God's word and prayed over God's word and, and hidden God's word in our heart, then we can have the discernment that somebody is teaching us false doctrine. And, and of course, we should, whenever we open the Word, whenever we read, whenever we uh, would listen to a message, wherever it might be, if it's on TV or the Internet or uh, whatever, we need to make sure that we desire and ask the Holy Spirit, to guide us and, and to help us to understand so that we know what we're hearing. Is it true or not? Is it biblical or not? Is this God's truth or not? And so that's the ministry. He will teach us. Uh, and uh, of course, obviously, we have to be in the Word for Him to do that. Uh, human teachers are necessary. They are that necessary link in the procedure of instructing believers. Uh, we have to, uh, to look to the Holy Spirit to teach us to teach others. And you must search the scriptures daily to see if these things are so. Uh, <clears throat> you know, if you hear a message and there's no scripture, you need to stop and say, why is there no scripture? Uh, there, there are those who will uh, come up with uh, clever ideas. They, they, they are motivational speakers, maybe. You know, a motivational speaker doesn't know, need his Bible. He sits down and he thinks uh, of people, thinks about himself, and thinks about, all right, this is, I have this problem, this problem, this problem, and how should I best deal with this? <clears throat> and then I can go along and I can teach others. And uh, motivational speakers are very popular, uh, and uh, that's all fine and dandy, and companies pay them bukus of money to come and speak, but that, they don't belong in church. They don't belong in church. They don't belong in pulpits. Because all they're doing is telling you uh, their own stuff, their own truth, but it's not necessarily God's truth. And you can discover them because of the fact that they uh, are not using Scripture, or if they are using Scripture, you can determine that, wait a minute, they didn't get that from that portion of Scripture. Uh, I'll never forget, I went to a conference, and, and, and a lot of the conference was good. I, I want to say that very clearly. Uh, but I went to a conference for, it was a couple of days. Uh, we traveled from Ohio to Pennsylvania to here. Uh, a large church, the place was packed out. Uh, pastors, uh, it was four pastors. 
Uh, and so it is pretty much all pastors in place. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> there was uh, one session where the speaker, uh, and, and let me put it this way, the, the speaker was using the, uh, the old overhead projector and, and would have the, the, the film on there, the, the sheets, and it was all typed out. And so uh, the, the speaker had a point and then he would flip over and it would, these little lines and it would give you verses of scripture. And he said to us, we don't have time for us to read these, so I'll just give you these and then you can look them up later. Uh, and so we were sitting there and we're listening and, you know, and we're probably, most of us are nodding our head. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and then we had other sessions and then we finally traveled back to Ohio and we're all, you know, in the car and appreciating what we heard and everything and we get back and I don't know how long it was, but uh, at some point I thought, well, you know, uh, I need to go and look up those verses of scripture. And so I did. And I, I sat down and I took the, the first point and I, you know, I had written them all down and I, you know, and I, I read the verse and I said, what does this have to do with this? And then I got another point and I, what does this have to do with this? And, Boy, I was a little confused because I had heard some good things and I had heard things that had scripture behind them and everything. And so I, I'm not one. I, I, I'm one who thinks about writing to somebody. Uh, you know, thinking about writing to somebody in the newspaper or uh, something. I, I think about it. In fact, I compose the whole letter in my mind. And then nothing happens. Uh, either they've gone on to something else, or uh, they don't have a large enough section in their paper uh, other than to print about three letters, and the rest of them, you know where they go. But uh, I, I actually acted upon this, one of the rare times. And, it, and, and my wife will tell you, you know, I'll, I'll tell her one of these things. She said, why don't you write to them? And, Nothing happened, you know. So I wrote to them. I wrote to the individual himself. Uh, he didn't write to me back, and I kind of understand that. He, he was, uh, uh, you know, he was very busy with his ministry and everything, going from place to place, speaking and everything. He wasn't a pastor. He, he went out and spoke. And, uh, but they, they, they answered my, my letter. And they, the answer was this, uh, that uh, the, these verses had a secondary meaning. And that that's where these came from. You know, I sat down and I began to think about that. And I went back. I went back and I thought, well, you know, I'm, I, you know something wrong with me, obviously. I'm not speaking to thousands of people. And, and all preachers, there. I'm not doing that, so there must be something, I, I must be missing something here. And I went back and I, I looked at each one of those. And uh, I went, no. Even if you could come up with a secondary meaning, it's still not there. Then, a, a long time later, many years later, but that stuck with me. It stuck with me to think about this uh, when I read something, when I hear something. And so then I read many years later a book, a very, very popular book, probably on the, the number one uh, New York Times reader's list. Uh, in fact, I think it was beyond just the religious thing. I, it, was a, it was a number one. I mean, people all over America were extremely excited about the book. And, uh, and so I read the book. I kind of wondered why the author, who was a pastor, by the way, used so many different translations of scripture. Now, I don't have a problem with using 
some different translation. I, I understand that. Sometimes one translation will make something much clearer and everything. But this was, I mean, it was like every page was another one and another one and another one, different, 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 different. And uh, I don't know, I'm, a, I'm, I'm kind of a uh, suspicious person. I have bad habit. And so I began to go back and I began to read the Word of God in just one or two translations. So I wouldn't miss it here. What I came to the conclusion of, and I could be wrong, but I, my conclusion was that this individual had a thought and then looked for a verse that would back up that thought and had to go to an awful lot of translation before they finally came up with something. Now here's the thing. Our teaching and preaching has got to come from the Word. Amen. Not from ourselves and then try to plug the Word of God into it to substantiate or back up what we're saying. And that's where the problem comes in. Where teachers go and try to find a verse. And that was that thing with the first one. Secondary meaning. Secondary meaning? You mean you were reading the word of God? And, and, and it said, my little children, these things I write to you that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And then the thought comes to you. Well, there's a secondary meaning here. And this is, this is a good thing I should teach somebody. I don't think so. Now, there, there are portions of Scripture that we can understand in more one, I think, have more than one application. But when the whole message is that way, then there's a serious problem there. And when the whole book is that way, there's a serious problem with that. And uh, so we need teachers, but we also need discernment. And the Holy Spirit is one to give us and help us with that discernment. Uh, Holy Spirit, teach me and help me to understand God's word. And, I, and another thing, and I, I think about this periodically, because I've heard people say to me, well, pastor, I don't have your teach your training to be able to understand. Then you're denying what the Bible says. Yes, I understand that the, the, the training God allowed me and graciously gave me uh, and, and that I continue to, uh, to, to learn and to grow. Uh, yes, I can, I can give you uh, greater insights and things like that. But you can read and understand God's Word. Amen. Will you understand every little detail? No. I haven't yet. I'm still working on it. Every once in a while I'll be having my devotions and I'll come across a verse and I'll think, I haven't read that at least 50 times. This is the New Testament. I've read it over 200 times or more. And I'm like, really? Where was I when I was reading this? But God opened something new. But it's still that truth. That truth has always been there. It's not, it's just me who just woke up. But we can understand God's word. Now at times it takes some time, it takes effort, uh, it takes prayer, uh, it it it, uh, it takes that we have to think these things through. We have to look at context and all these things. But praise the Lord, we have the Holy Spirit to teach us God's Word, to teach us His truth. But we can understand God's Word. Don't ever come to the place that you say, "Well, I just can't understand it." If if I say this kindly. But you know, the Bible says that if we, we don't know the Lord, then the scriptures is closed to us. So 
we should be able to understand God's word if we know Christ as our Savior. Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you for this part of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. O oh Lord, that we would spend more time in the Word and then allowing thy Holy Spirit to teach us. We not only need to read the Word and hear the Word, but we need to study the Word. We need to meditate upon the Word. We need to memorize the Word. And then we need to obey the word. Bless this precious truth to our hearts, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.